That's the lot, and we ain't found nothing yet. Someone's coming. Let's get. Girl? Little girl? Is this your dolly? Is this your dolly? What's your name, little lamb? See you, Dolly. Can you hold your Dolly?
Yeah. Well, did you find anything? Any clues? Any identification? Well, you know, all the, the trunks and the clothes that Hoss said were scattered all around? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're gone. A gun? Yeah. Sheriff Coffee figures some squatters must have come along and helped themselves. Ah, it's hoping there'd be some identification we could find from the clothing or the, the trunk. The Hoss had paid a little more attention to them. Well, he was probably too worried about the little girl. Well, what's Roy going to do? Well, he's wired towns in both directions. See if he can't get some clues to the identity of those poor people. Oh, that'll take such a long time. That little child needs help. She worries me. I... Well, she needs somebody to take care of her whom she knows, somebody she's comfortable with. Yeah. Now, where is she now? Upstairs. House is washing her hands and face. Mm -hmm. Supper is ready. Mr. Carton Lighter. Thank you, Suchin. Thank you. How's up, Singh's uncle making it out? Oh, fine. And he's prepared a soup for tonight. <clears throat> Go wash up. No, I'm not dirty. Go wash your hands, Joseph. Yes, sir. Horse, supper's ready. Oh, thank you, Sir Jim. When you taste this soup. Here you are, young lady. She pretty? She sure is. Very nice, horse. Very, very, very nice. I think some of that soup's about all she's gonna be able to go this meal. I asked Su Chen to fix her up something special. Su Chen? Ah, uh, sure it's not too hot. New horse. Thank you. Just right, thank you. <laughs> there you are, young lady. Now, you dive right in. Now, listen, you know you gotta eat. You got a nice glass of milk and a nice bowl of soup that old Su Chen made for you. He makes good soup. Take a little taste of it first. For hogs? That's a doll. Ain't that good? Have another one. Oop. There you go. Doggone, that's pretty good, isn't it? Here's a good one. Oop. It must be pretty good soup. Look at the way she's eating it. That is good. I'll really get you. You look into those staring eyes. Poor little thing doesn't say anything. It's enough to break your heart. The child is in shock. A terrible experience. Terrible. I just wish there was some way we could help her. Well, I'm going in to see Doc Martin in the morning. to say good night. What? Old gown of mine that I cut the bottom out of. <laughs> well, there's still room for about five of her. Well, doggone it, she's sweet enough to be five. I wish she was. Good night, darling. Can you say good night? You have pleasant dreams. Good night, Paul. Let me know as soon as you get a reply from any of those telegrams you sent, Alan. I sure will, Ben. I already promised Hawes. Hawes? Yeah. Has he been here? Yeah, about an hour ago. <laughs> Hi, Pa. 
Where you been all morning, huh? Oh. I went to town. I think I might find out something about our, our little guest. Hey, what'd you find out? Well, I found out that I was running an hour behind a horse wherever I went. Where is that fella? Uh, he went out riding fence as soon as he got back. Oh, where's the little girl? She went with him. She went with him riding fence? Yeah. Hey, it was kind of cute, too, Pike. Should have seen her. She's sitting up there on a horse behind him, those little arms trying to go around that big middle of his. <laughs> well, you tell that fella with the big middle I want to see him as soon as he gets back here. Okay, I'll do it. Joe tells me you want to talk to me. Yeah, that's right, Hoss. I'd like to talk to you alone. Fine, I'll be down in just a minute. I'll take her up and get her all cleaned up. Yeah, it's all right. I'll take her up. No. She wouldn't like that. She's she's used to me. Now, Hoss, Joseph is perfectly capable of washing a little girl's hands and face. You take her along, Joe. Right. Come on, I. That's exactly what I want to talk to you about, Hoss. That little girl needs a whole lot more care than a bunch of bachelors like us can give her. What's wrong with the care I'm giving her? Oh, nothing's wrong with it, except she needs a... she needs a woman's care, like, like Mrs. Jenkins would give her if you'd let her. Paul, what do you got against having a little gal in the house, anyhow? Oh, Hoss, don't try to make me out an ogre. Nothing, of course not. That little girl isn't our little girl. Well, I found her. And I'm going to take care of her if somebody claims her. I'm going to go up there and get her right now. Too. No, you're not. You're going to stay right here. Because if that little girl is going to stay in this house until her relatives find her or we find her relatives, then she'd better get used to all of us taking care of her. Right now, you start cleaning up those guns. You've been neglecting them long enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. There. Now, you see, Uncle Joe did that just about as well as Uncle Hoss could have. Now, let me have a little bit of a look at you here. We gotta give you the whole inspection. Ear number one, clean as a whistle. Ear number two, clean as a whistle. Now, I have a little surprise for you for being such a good girl. You wait. Something I picked up for you in town. Here we are. Now, let's see what we got right here. See? And what do you think of her? This dolly's name is Lucy. And Lucy's a good little girl because she has, has clean ears just like you do. And uh, she's got little flowers on her hat and everything. And she's all yours. You take Lucy and give her a hug because she's lonesome. There. Hey, now I've got an idea. Why don't you stay up here and, and get acquainted with Lucy and I'll go downstairs and then in a little while, you come on down and, and show her to Pa and Hoss and surprise him. Okay? Okay. Hey, where's the little gal? How come she didn't come down with you? Uh, she'll be down in a minute. You get these clean? I don't like to leave her up there by herself. Why well, will you stop, Boray? I said she'd be down in a second. That's probably the rifle that did it. She thought I was trying to hurt Hoss. Yeah. Think we ought to go up there? No, no, no. I'll just uh, let Hoss take care of her. She's used to him. Let's finish cleaning these guns. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to take this one into Muscatel's gun shop, huh? Hey, Paul, Joe. She's all right. Oh, good. No good. fooling. She, she talked to me. She what? Really? She talked to you? Yeah, I was telling her all about what we was going to do tomorrow, and right out of a clear blue, she, she spoke to me. Hey, the doc said that another shock might cure her. Come on up and hear from yourself. I want you to tell Paul and little Joe what part of the Ponderosa you like best. Huh? Well, I don't know. She, she looks the same to me. Remember us talking about the lake? Remember? Huh? Oh, 
Moss, are you sure she talked before? Yeah, I'm sure. I reckon she's just tired or something. See you a little later, dear. You, you get your nap, sweetheart. We'll, we'll see you after a while. All right. Hey, you really think she talks to him? Is so obsessed with that child. Once he'll get well so badly, maybe, maybe he imagines she talks. Now then, up you go. It's that easy on old Chubb. You might break him down or something. You're so big. She sure looks cute on there, buddy, doesn't she? Look how tiny she looks. Where are you going? I'm going into town to talk to Roy, see if he's found out anything about the little girl's relatives. Oh, well, Hoss isn't going to like it much if he has. Well, Hoss is going to have to get used to the idea that that little girl isn't his. housework. <laughs> well, don't let me interfere with your legal duties, Roy. <laughs> Good. Keep working. I can talk with you. No, I was all through in there. Huh? And my next duty was to come out and see you. Oh, did you find something out about the little girls, folks? Well, something, but not exactly what I wanted to find out. I was able to trace the murdered people back to St. Louis. It seems that they were rather wealthy and they were on their way to San Francisco to set up a business there. And they were probably carrying considerable money. Yeah, terrible. Terrible thing. What about some relatives in St. Louis? There was none that I could find out about. But on the chance that they did have some in San Francisco, I wired the marshal there. Yeah, well, that's a good idea, Roy. That's a good idea. Oh, and if you find out anything, be sure that I know about it first, huh? Well, sure, Ben, but why? Well, it's, uh, it's Hoss. Hoss has, uh, has become kind of attached to the little girl, you know? He, <laughs> he almost... Thinks the little girl belongs to him, you know. And uh, if there are any relatives, I'd, I'd like to have the opportunity of telling him so that, you know, sort of let him down easy. I understand that. And I certainly will do that. There was one other thing that I did find out. The, the little girl's name is Lisa. 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 Thank you, Roy. Thank you. Uh -huh. You're my best of heart. Yep. Yeah, sure is. George, do you have any uh, any dresses for little girls? Well, sure, plain or fancy. Plain, I guess, would be better. You say plain, little girls say fancy. Oh, well, maybe it better be fancy then. <laughs> Is it? Jim and Hank. Come on in. That was some tip you gave us, Mr. Collins. We didn't find nothing. 
I know. My brother-in-law was very shrewd. What's that supposed to mean? Well, my wife got a second letter from her sister saying that they were worried about what might happen to them on the way, so they changed their plans. Plans? I am in no mood to play games, Mr. Collins. Now, let's have it straight. What did they do with the money? Send it on ahead to San Francisco. Where in San Francisco? She didn't say that. All she said was that if anything happened to them, the information would be inside a doll the little girl was carrying. A doll? Didn't see no doll. How about you, Hank? Me neither. Yeah, uh, Lisa undoubtedly has it with her. How do we get to Lisa? Well, Sheriff Coffey sent me a wire from Virginia City saying that she was being cared for by the Cartwrights out at the Ponderosa. Now, I'm going to drive back to Oriana tonight. I'll come back in the morning by stagecoach and officially claim my wife's niece. You two guys get out to the Ponderosa and keep an eye on it. See if you can get your hands on that doll. There better be something in that doll, Mr. Collins. We've wasted enough time already. Don't talk to me about time. The bank examiners are due the first of the month, and if I haven't got that money, where do you suppose I'll be? Now, you get out to the Ponderosa and get your hands on that doll. Pretty little gal I ever saw. Oh, oh you're getting big. bet you that Lisa must be a little strange with uh, only a house full of men for company. How'd you find out her name was Lisa? Uh, well, maybe we ought to discuss that alone. Huh? Yeah, maybe. Look, honey, you run along upstairs and wash up. I'll see you in a minute. telegrams have established that her mother and father were on their way from St. Louis to San Francisco with a considerable amount of money. She, uh... She have any other relatives in St. Louis? Well, none that Roy could determine. I knew she wouldn't. Roy's wiring San Francisco to see if she has any there. It won't do no good. She ain't got none there, neither. Oh, well, how do you know that? Well, uh, I just feel it. I, I know she ain't. I just, I just know it. <sighs> He's got to get over this feeling he has with that little girl, because sooner or later some relative is going to show up. Yeah. 
I just think it's silly, that's all. All right, so you think it's silly. Now, what's this hot discussion about? Well, I just think it's silly for him to keep dressing a little girl up like a little boy all the time. That's not a fact. That's a fact, yes. Supper almost ready. No, I'll run up and get Lisa. Hey. Good evening, everybody. Hey, did you hear that? Did I tell you she could talk? She's getting better all the time. Come here, honey. Come on down. My, oh, my, oh, my, how pretty you are. Hey, where'd you get that new pretty dress and that little dolly? From... From Uncle Ben. From Uncle Ben. And Uncle Little Joe. And Uncle Little Joe. So, you two fellas been trying to steal my gal behind my back, huh? We just wanted to show you that we're really not as hard-hearted as you think we are. Come on over here now and tell me all about that lovely little dolly that you've got. Now, what's the dolly's name? Lucy. Her name is Lucy. Lucy? That's a beautiful name. She lives in a box in my room. Really? In a box? Yes. I hide her there so the bad men can't find her. <laughs> Oh, well, you don't have to do that around here. There's no bad men around here. Unless, of course, you think Pa and Hoss and I are bad men. No. These are really, truly bad men. Lisa, honey, you don't, you don't need to talk like that. There ain't no bad men around here. They're around here. The same bad men who did those things to my mommy and daddy. Sweetheart. Are you making up a story? No, Hoss. I saw them. When? This morning, after you saddled the horse and went into the house for something you forgot. Yeah, that'd, that'd be our lunch. Well, I chased a chicken back into the barn, and there they were, the bad men. They said, come here. But I ran out, and when I looked back, they were gone. Why didn't you tell me all this then? I was afraid. Now set the hands, see if they know anything about this. Yes, sir. Well. Ben. Good morning. Uncle Little Joe. Well, good morning, beautiful. <laughs> Where are you off to this early? Oh, Lisa and I thought we'd go out and have ourselves a picnic. Oh, are you going to take your dolly? Uh-huh. You know, hmm. Lucy has never been on a horse and didn't want to come along. Oh. But I told her I'd hold her tight and that the horse would walk slow. Is that all right, Hoss? That's fine, sweetheart. Come along. Uh, you have a good time now. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Oh, boy. You know, when Hoss has kids of his own, his wife won't see him more than an hour a day. <laughs> She's lucky. <laughs> yeah, you... He'll... he'll make a good father. <laughs> he also makes a good mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have some breakfast. All right. Ain't this a pretty place for a picnic? Yes, Hoss. It's very pretty. Let me help you down. Down you go. Yes, sir. It's a mighty pretty place, all except for that place over there where that fence is down. You wouldn't mind, would you, if after we get through with our picnic, old Hoss goes over there and fixes that fence? No, Hoss. Lucy and I won't mind. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a canteen, I'm going to go down to the lake and get us a canteen of cool lake water. And if you and old Lucy get hungry before I get back, you just dive right into that basket, all right? I'll wait for you, Hoss. And so will Lucy. That's a nice kid. Hey, I 
I know you're hungry, Lucy, but we'll have to wait till Hoss gets back till we can eat. Lisa? Lisa? Oh, you sure did a fine job locating Lisa's uncle. I'll tell you that. Well, thanks. Let's just hope that he's on that stage like he worried he was going to be. Oh, thank you. Sheriff Coffey? Are you Mr. Collins? I am. Hope you had a nice trip. Thank you. I want you to meet Ben Cartwright. He's been taking care of Lisa. Mr. Collins, certainly a pleasure to meet you, sir. Oh, I'm very happy to meet you, Mr. Cartwright. My wife and I are very grateful to you. Oh, Lisa's a lovable child. She's been no trouble at all. It's been wonderful having her at the Ponderosa. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. You know, my wife and I have never seen Lisa. We're gonna have to find some way to make up this terrible tragedy to her. Yes. Really, a terrible tragedy. I, I'm not quite sure that she realizes what has happened. I hope not. Be often so young. It's ghastly, huh? Terrible, just terrible. Well, gentlemen, shall we get on down to my office? You did bring the uh, identification I asked for. Mm -hmm. No offense, man. It's just that I've got to be sure, you know. Why, of course. You'd be derelict in your duties otherwise, Sheriff. <laughs> Lisa's uncle, my son Joseph. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Pleasure's mine. Uh, where did uh, Hoss say he was taking Lisa for that picnic? Keep by, I don't know. Paul! Paul! She's gone. Lisa's gone. What happened? Well, I, I went down to the lake to get some fresh water, and when I got back, she's gone, that's all. You mean you left her alone? Yeah, Dad burned it for just a minute. I left her up there in the picnic basket, and when I got back, there wasn't no sign of her. There's just some hoof prints around there, and I traced them off up into a rocky ridge and lost them. Joe, settle up a couple of horses. Cartwright, if anything happens to that girl, I'm going to hold you and your sons personally responsible. Look at your gun. Nothing. Not a thing. What's the matter with Collins, anyhow? Don't he know what he's doing? You know something? I bet she knows what happened to the information that was inside that doll. Maybe you're right. Little girl, you're going to tell us what we want to know. You understand? Well, there sure isn't any sign of tracks around here. Maybe we all ought to spread out if anybody sees any tracks and signal the others, huh? Sounds sensible. Hey, Pa, I was just thinking, remember that old deserted ranch house? It's just over the rise there. Maybe we ought to have a look. Yeah, that's a good idea. What'd you do with it? You want to tell us? It ain't no use, Jim. She doesn't even hear us. Maybe so. Or maybe she's just playing possum. Hank. Stick one of those twigs in the fire and make it hot. Oh, Jim, you ain't... What do you want to do? Stick around here till somebody tracks us down?
Find who those horses belong to. Hey, Jim, somebody's out there. Joe. You might hit Lisa. What are we gonna do? I think we'd better rush him. Joe, you and I would take the right side of the house. I should go straight ahead and fire over their heads, keep them down. All right, ready? Get out of here. You all right? Sure. I had to do it, Mr. Cartwright. It was my life or theirs. Oh, they're both dead. You worry, honey. They ain't gonna break it no more. Do I have to go with him, Uncle Ben? Well, I'm afraid so, dear. I don't want to go with him. Well, he's your uncle. Just the same. I don't like him. Did Hoss say I had to go? Oh, yeah, honey. Hoss, he said you had to go. And that uh, you should be a good girl and do everything your aunt and uncle tell you to do. Sure wish he didn't have to go fix those fences again this morning. Feels funny going away without saying goodbye to him. Yeah, I know it does. Maybe we, maybe we should say goodbye right here, huh? Goodbye, dear. You be a good girl now. We love you. Let's go. There we are. Collins, you're going to have to pound the road pretty hard if you're going to get to Virginia City before the stage leaves at 10 o'clock, so you hang on tight now. Oh, by the way, Mr. Cartwright, I'm terribly sorry I was sort of sharp with you, but I was very worried about what might have happened to her. Oh, I understand, of course. Bye, Lisa. Thanks again. Bye. Remember this place, Lisa? I don't like it here. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of. You're with me. 
You tell me where you lost your doll, huh? Can't we go away from here, please? Not till we find that doll. You understand? Find that doll. You're hurting me. Not as much as I'm going to hurt you if you don't try to remember. But I don't know where I dropped it. If you don't remember, if you don't do as I tell you, I'm going to cut this doll up. See? Huh? Like that. <laughs> Sweetheart, he's not going to hurt either one of you anymore, you hear? Look! I found her. I knew where I had dropped her, but I never told him. So that's what he was after. Wonder why? Mommy told me there was something very important inside, and I mustn't show it to anybody. Lisa, you reckon you could show it to old horse? Yes, Hoss. Lisa's aunt gets into that 3 o'clock stage in San Francisco. That doesn't give you too much time. Yeah, I know. I guess he's having a little hard time saying goodbye. Hoss, you better hurry. What are you doing just standing there? Don't you know your Uncle Little Joe's waiting for you outside to take you into Virginia City? You ain't come all the way from San Francisco to fetch you. <sighs> Honey, she, she's your mommy's sister. She's a good woman. She's not like your uncle. He was a bad, bad man. And he'll go to jail for a long, long time. But your aunt will take you back to San Francisco and you'll go to school and you'll, you'll grow up to be a nice, big lady. Not no dang tomboy. Aren't you going with me, Hoss? Old Hoss got to stay here and fix fences. Hoss, I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. Now, come on. We go. You all ready? Uh-huh. Uh, 
does. It's probably the best thing after all, anyhow. Dang ranch ain't no place to raise a little gal. Just turn her into a tomboy or something. Dang talkative little old gal, anyhow. Regular chatterbox ain't got time to put up in all that foolishness. Sure you won't have another steak? Uh, no, thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you kindly. Uh, three's about my limit for lunch. You know, Jake, you don't eat as hearty as you used to. That's the truth, Ben. That's the truth. Maybe it's the heat. I don't recall a hot spell as bad as this in the last 40 years. Yeah, it sure is a rough one. <laughs> Now, uh, Jake, about the uh, renewal of our agreement on the water rights. I had Ira Minton drop the contract as usual. Uh, lawyers come pretty high these days, Ben. Uh, you paying the bill? <coughs> yeah, as, as usual. Now, for your protection now, Jake, I want you to go over that contract with Ira. I intend to do just that, Ben, as long as you're paying the bill. As uh, usual. Howdy, Jake. Howdy, boys. <laughs> yes, sir. Sure is a pleasure seeing you, Ben. <laughs> Even though it is only once a year. Well, it's a pleasure seeing you too, Jake. You know, we're very grateful for the water rights that we get from you. Yeah. Ponderosa sure needs plenty of water. <laughs> hey, Jake, aren't you kind of hot in that black suit? Nope. Black keeps the sun out. <laughs> you boys ought to know that. Didn't they teach you anything in school? Now, Ben, as long as I'm here, why don't you advise me on something? Well, I will if I can. Well, the thing is, I've decided to make out my will. What's the matter, Jake? Ain't you feeling too well? I'm feeling fine. Well, what's all the concern about a will? Don't you think a 92-year-old man ought to have his affairs in order? If you're feeling fine. Uh, I was till I got here. But dang if it don't look like I'm about to be talked to death. Just trying to help, Jake. Just trying to help. <laughs> now, Ben, would you be kind enough to tell me how to go about making out a will? Oh, Jake, I, I think you ought to see a lawyer about that. Mm -hmm. oh, look, you, you're going to stop over and see Ira Minton about the water agreement. Why don't you ask him? Hey, maybe you got an idea there, Ben. As long as I'm seeing Ira about these here papers, why don't you just add the will making to the bill? All right, Jake, <laughs> that's the way you want it. <laughs> it's a right smart thought you had there, Ben. I'm much obliged. Oh, here, let me help you. Uh, let me alone. I I'm all right. <laughs> Jake! Jake! Let's get him in the house, Paul. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, no time for that, Hoss. There's no time for nothing now. Not even making out my, my will. Are you going to be all right, Jake? The, the heat got to you a little bit, that's all. No, no. Feels like my head split wide open. Uh, man. I'm right here, Jake. Uh, I want everything I got to go to my... Next over here. All right. 
Will, will, you, will you see to it? I, I, I give you my word, Jake. You'll be all right. Oh, thanks. Much obliged to you. Jake, who's your next of kin? Jake, who is your next of kin? Meredith Smith. Did you say Meredith Smith? That's right. Ben, see to it. Meredith Smith gets everything I got. I was never more serious in my life. According to these, I judge that Jake Smith's holdings amount to well over $160,000. $160,000? Well, this is his title to acreage in Texas. These are shares in a thriving copper mine in Montana. And this is part interest, a generous part interest, in a freight line running out of Oklahoma into New Mexico. Yes, I'd say that Jake did all right by himself in his short 92 years. <laughs> when I think of the steaks I fed that man over the past 15 years. <laughs> you know, maybe that's why he was able to accumulate as much as he did. True, true. <laughs> uh, what do I do with those papers, I <laughs> Well, since you're the executor of the estate... No, wait a minute. Who says I'm the executor of his estate? Well, he appointed you with his dying breath. Both your sons were witnesses. That makes you the executor, whether you like it or not. Well, I don't like it. Well, nevertheless, that's the law. Now, your first job is to find old Jake's heir, or heirs. He did name one, didn't he? Yeah, Meredith Smith, whoever that may be. Well, then go find Meredith Smith. Oh, well, wait a minute. How do I go about doing that? Well, the simplest way is to uh, advertise. Put notices in all the legal columns of every newspaper. Oh. You've got six months. Six months. Why, why six months? It's the law. It's designed to protect the estate against any false claims made by possible debtors. Oh, I see. Uh, I'll bill you for all this, of course. Of course. Still nothing, huh? Nothing. For six months, nothing. Nobody's even made a claim against the estate. Well, I wonder why that Meredith Smith hasn't answered the notice you put in the paper. Oh, I've been wondering that for six months. Well, at least we got till tomorrow. Sure. And after that, everything reverts back to the territory of Nevada, including the water rights. Yeah, we gotta have water. Hey, what about that creek over on the Harris place? I talked to Mr. Harris about that. Water there's so low, he hasn't any to spare for us. We'll just have to hope Meredith Smith shows up. It's a pretty hopeless thought, isn't it? That's him, coming down the street there with his son. Which place? Mr. Ben Cartwright. That's right. I'm Meredith Smith. <laughs> well, it sure is good to meet you, Mr. Smith. Uh, this is my son, Joseph. Joseph, this is Meredith Smith. We've been waiting to meet you, mate. Oh, you come to claim Jake's estate. Yes, sir, I did. Poor Uncle Jake. Jake was your uncle? Yes, sir, he was. And as fine a man as ever lived. Did he leave much? Oh, he left a tidy sum. As a matter of fact, uh, I guess you'll be able to get along all right if you don't chew too much tobacco. <laughs> Uh, uh, how's that, sir? Oh, uh, I was just trying to make a joke. Uh, oh, no, he left a goodly amount. Uh, uh, of course, as you know by my advertisement in the paper, you can't claim it until after tomorrow. Well, yes, sir, I, I read that piece in the paper, but uh, how come I can't get it till tomorrow? Oh, it's just a technicality, you see. Just a technicality. See, we have to wait a full six months just to make sure there aren't any creditors' claims. I see. Tomorrow's the last day. Uh, Mr. Smith? 
Why don't you go over to that hotel there? It's a very fine place. You just rent yourself a room and charge it to my account. Well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Cartwright. I'll be there when you need me. Well, it's sure good to see you, Mr. Smith. Sure good to see you. Looking forward to it. It was awful nice of you taking care of the room like that. Well, son, a little politicking doesn't hurt. He owns the water rights. Mr. Ben Cartwright. Uh, Mr. Ben Cartwright. Ma'am? I'm glad to meet you. I'm Meredith Smith. Did you say Meredith Smith? Well, I'd say it's an improvement. Uh, Ma'am, this, uh, this is my son, Joseph, Miss, Miss Smith. How do you do? It's my pleasure, man. Uh, well, let me let me take your suitcase, Miss Smith, and uh, Joseph. I'll, I'll take Miss Smith over to the hotel and get her settled, and I'll I'll meet you later at the saloon, folks. Sure, you don't want me to help you, Bob? No, I'm fine. Lady would like a room in your hotel. Certainly, Mr. Cartwright. Meredith Smith, put that big cowboy. Uh, uh, Mr. Potts, uh, we'll just make sure that this young lady has one of your best rooms. She's my guest. Anything you say, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. It's a pleasure, Miss Smith. Who do you think, Bob? Well, obviously, one of them is a fraud. The question is, which one? Yeah. You know, I hope it's not the girl. She's pretty good looking. Nothing, I just got a hunch. You don't suppose that? No. Don't say it. I think you may be right. Mr. Ben Cartwright? Mm -hmm. Mr. Meredith Smith. Well, how did you know that? Well, we've uh, been expecting you. Oh. But I'm afraid the Smith estate won't be settled until sometime tomorrow. Well, I'm in no hurry, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, you'll find that the uh, hotel at the corner is a very nice place to stay. You just tell the clerk that you're my guest. Well, thank you very much. Until tomorrow, then? Until tomorrow. Never guess in your whole life who this is. <laughs> Meredith Smith. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you know that? Oh, well, I was very quick to catch on. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Smith. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Cartwright. I, uh, I presume you've come about the estate. Oh, yes. Well, it'll take a day or two before everything can be straightened out. Oh, I understand. Uh, legal matters have a way of getting complicated. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't realize how much until now. Uh, well, uh, I guess you two boys have plenty to keep you busy. I'll take Mr. Smith over to the hotel and get him straightened out. Come along, Mr. Smith. Hey, Joe, what's going on around here, anyhow? Well, I'll see if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. 
Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Just what do you think you're doing? Well, for one thing, I'm creating a small boom in the hotel business all by myself. Now, Mr. Smith is going to register as my guest in this hotel, so just give him a pen. <laughs> I'd like you to meet my pa, Ben Cartwright, Mrs. Smith. Huh? Yeah, Mrs. Smith just came in on the California stage. Mrs. Meredith Smith. Yes. It was so thoughtful of you to send your son to meet me. Yes, he's a great help. Where's your, uh, where's your brother horse? Oh, he went back to the Ponderosa. He I... told me to remind you we still have a ranch to run. Yes, I hope so. Yes. Uh, well, Mr. Smith, uh, would you like to register? Mr. Potts, this lady is going to register here as my guest in this hotel. Cousin. Well, I make it too. This thing has really turned into a problem, hasn't it? Yeah. I think we deserve a beer. You know, I was just thinking, though. All right, suppose Jake's land goes to the territory of Nevada. Now, why can't we get the water rights from them? Oh, I wish it were that easy. If the land goes back to the territory of Nevada, it goes up for auction. Everybody knows we want the water rights, so the price goes sky high. We've got to find the rightful heir before the time is up. Drink hearty. Hmm. What's Brother Hoss doing back in town? Hoss, what are you doing back here? Oh, Paul on the way to the Ponderosa a while ago, I ran into a fella looking for you. Oh, what do you want? Well, he says his name's Meredith Smith. Uh, another one? Yep. Well, where's he? Well, he's sort of bashful. He's standing over here at the door. Keep your fingers crossed. Smith is my Paul, Ben Cartwright. Meredith Smith, most honorable sir. And I'm telling you, the whole idea is preposterous. Not at all. I'm Mr. Cartwright's guest, ain't I? Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Potts. Uh, what seems to be the trouble? This gentleman here wishes me to pay for his barbershop services and put it on your bill. Oh, uh, well, after all, the gentleman is my guest. <laughs> Much obliged. Oh, uh, uh, don't forget to tip. I'm a big tipper. Big tipper. Big show off, if you ask me. Here you go. Now, just how much of this do you intend to stand for? Oh, well, Mr. Potts. I... Oops. Oh, good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Uh -huh. I've had so much fun just buying a few things. Why, Virginia City has. Quite a nice collection of shops for a town this size. Yeah, yes, it, it has a... Oh, I... I charged them to my hotel bill. You don't mind, do you? Oh, no, no, of course not. An heiress can't be expected to wear just anything. Oh, well, you're... You're absolutely right. It's very pretty. Oh, of course, I'll reimburse you when the estate is settled. Oh, of course. You are a dear, an absolute dear. Thank you. Just add these to the others, Mr. Potts. Anything you say, Mr. Cartwright, but I must say... Don't. Good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Lovely day, isn't it? Yes, it uh, 
It's a lovely day. I've been out buying a few things. And since I'm a little short of cash, just until the estate is settled, of course, sure. I thought that... Uh, you uh, might want to charge these to your hotel bill. Yes, how did you know? Oh, <laughs> I just sort of guessed. <laughs> It isn't very much, really. A few bottles of Dr. Wisdom's Wonder Tonic, five pounds of cloves, and a few fresh coffee beans. You see, I'm bothered with a little stomach trouble. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mrs. Smith. I really am. Well, ta-ta. I have a lot to take care of. Just thinking about all that money is giving me a case of indigestion. <sighs> Five pounds of cloves. Better prepare yourself, Mr. Cartwright. Ah, present from Mr. Cartwright. Thank you, Honorable Sir. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, well, what did I buy? Eight pounds lychee nuts, six stuffed water lilies, ginger powdered coconut, seven jellyfish, and a dried squid. No shark pin? <laughs> Callie. Don't call me Callie. Well, all right. If I don't call you Callie, what do I call you? I don't want you to call me anything. I don't want you to even speak to me. Now, look, what are you doing here? I'd say that wasn't any of y'all business. I asked you to stay in Abilene. I told you I'd be back for you as soon as I had enough money for us to get married. Now, why didn't you wait for me? I got tired of waiting. Honey, you know I love you. Well, you said that before, too. Now, why should I believe you now? now? Let me go. Not until you tell me what you're doing here. Callie! Callie! Oh, 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 my goodness. I, I, I thought this was uh, my room. Oh, that's all right, dearie. Well, you Come must, right on in. You must think. Oh, dear. Oh, I never could tell one hall door from another myself. Set a spell. Uh, thank you. Uh, I uh, don't believe I better. You going somewhere? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, I just came in. I, I, I've got a, a dreadful headache, and uh, I went out to get something for it. Oh, then you should have come here in the first place. Well, I got just the thing for you. Just the thing for me? Here you are. Take a good long swallow. Uh, Dr. Uh, Wisdom's Wonder Tonic. You'll wonder how you ever got along without it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm a bit cautious about taking strange medicine. Oh, so am I. But you don't need to worry about this one. As a matter of fact, I feel a little headache coming on myself. I'll take one with you. <laughs> that wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> it's, uh, it? It's warming, isn't it? <laughs> you notice that? Mm -hmm. It's the sure sign of a quick cure. Mm -hmm. Reckon I ought to have another one just to keep you company. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mrs. Smith. You're a kind, thoughtful woman. Oh, it's sweet of you to say so. <laughs> it is warming. <laughs> it's uh, very nice of you to share it with me. It's the least I can do for a friend. You consider me a friend? Certainly. <laughs> well, I don't usually make friends easily. An interesting man like you. I never would have known it. In fact, at times, I get quite lonely. Being a widow's lonely, too. Are you feeling better? 
considerably. Oh. <laughs> Do you suppose that I need another? You <laughs> oughtn't to take a chance. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh. Lady, he's first. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Do you want another one? Oh. Come on. Oh, no. Wait, Kelly. Now what? I just found out what you're doing here. Well, I'm doing the same thing you're doing. No, with me it's different. Sure it is. You want to get rid of everybody else so you can have it all for yourself. Callie, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. You're trying to scare me off so your chances will be better. That's what it boils down to, isn't it? Callie, you know I'm in love with you. And I just can't stand the thought of you ending up behind prison bars. Now, what do I have to say to convince you that you're making a terrible mistake? There's nothing you can say. Now, I'm not going back to that saloon. And when I get that money, I'm going to Europe and study music like I always planned. Now, if you want better odds, Mr. Gambler, you go talk somebody else in quitting. And when old Jake died, I uh, promised to see to it that his heir would uh, get all the property that old Jake left. Now, up until yesterday, I didn't have any luck at all locating an heir. Now, today, I, I got... More luck than I need. Explain, please. <clears throat> uh, we are all uh, Meredith Smiths. Ah, so. Nice big family. Now, how do you account for the fact that all of you are named Meredith Smith? Well, well that's, a, that's an old family name, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, I see. <laughs> You know, I had, a, I had a meeting with Sheriff Coffey this morning, and we were going through some posters, and just by chance, you might say, we came across this poster. Uh, how do you account for the fact that uh, the name under this picture of you is uh, John Swanson, also known as Snake Oil Swanson, one of the slickest con men of the West? Well, you'll, uh, you, you'll notice, Mr. Cartwright, that, uh, that poster doesn't say wanted. It, uh, it says warning. Well, that's true. But a charge of attempted fraud can change the wording. <laughs> well, let's, let's not be hasty about this. Let's uh, just say that I made an error in judgment, and uh, why don't we forget the whole thing? Well, all right, I don't mind that. On one condition that you leave Virginia City immediately. Of course. <sighs> Pity we might have made a lovely family. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think... Uh, I think I'll tell you that uh, attempted fraud, a fraud of any kind, is a crime punishable by law. Now, is there anybody else that might like to confess to uh, an error in judgment? Very well, then I guess the next thing we ought to do is uh, find out what kin you all were to. Jake, uh, and what you have to prove it. And we'll start with, uh, we'll start with you. <clears throat> well, uh, uh, here is, uh, my family Bible, uh, with, uh, uh my name, uh, oh, and, uh, date of birth. Yeah, and uh, where were you born? Connecticut. Connecticut. And, uh, what relationship did you have with Jake? Uh, oh, uh, 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 would would you repeat the question? Well, what 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 kin were you of Jake's? Uh, I don't know. You don't know. 
We n never lived in, near any of our relatives. Oh, I, I said thank you. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. Miss Smith? He was my grandpa. But I never expected to have my word doubted. Well, just trying to get things straight, Miss Smith. Mr. Smith? I was his grandson. But I'm afraid you'll just have to take my word for it. Mm. Mrs. Smith? Here's my marriage certificate, Mr. Cartwright. He was a fine man. Yes. Well, I guess that uh, leaves you. I, son. His son? Adopted son. Oh. Papers say so. Oh. Well, it's in Chinese. Why not? I, Chinese. Oh. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll take everything that you've... Uh, told me into consideration, and I'll be in touch with all of you just as soon as I possibly can be. Thank you. Well, I think that we should talk this over. There's nothing to talk about. I stand pat. I have nothing to lose. Uh, neither have I. Same like rest family. Good morning, Chen Lu. Morning, Mr. Cartwright. Morning. Now, shirt sure day. Tuesday, shirt sure day. Oh, oh, I, I didn't forget. Uh, that's not why I came in. Uh, you can read Chinese, can't you? Yes, but not all ancient scholars. Well, I don't think this was written by an ancient scholar. It's a legal document. But I do! Well, you didn't do anything. I just want you to read it. Oh, better. <laughs> More better. Not have glasses. Yeah, need glasses. You see them? No, but, well, I hope you look for them. Don't seem to be around. Crazy woman all the time, clean and high glasses. Where's my glasses? I find you not have to yell. Crazy woman yell all the time. Ooh, that's a pretty legal document, isn't it? Pretty legal, official. Uh, oh, official. Well, what does it say? Rising to hunt snakes. Aya. Morning, Cal. Oh, hi, Ben. What can I do for you? Well, I was hoping you'd be able to tell me something about this paper. I'll do the best I can. Uh, just a minute while I get my magnifying glass. Huh. That fool thing go. I had it just a minute ago. Cal, try your pocket. Pocket? Yeah. <laughs> now, how did you know? Figured. <laughs> Where's the paper? What? Uh -oh. uh, Meredith Crane and Jacob Smith. Now, does this belong to that woman that's been claiming she's old Jake's widow? Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping you might be able to clear the matter up for me. Well, maybe we can. Watermarks. Watermarks. Now hold it up to light. Hey, yeah, they're up in the left hand corner. Yeah? What about it? Well, it means that 20 years ago, when this certificate was dated, that paper manufacturing company wasn't even in business. Is that a fact? Yeah. Is that a fact? Come here. Hey, what about this Bible? Huh? Yeah. Well, that's hard to say. Seems real enough. Look at it through the glass. Huh? Any way you can be sure? 
Well, I reckon I can compare the paper in this Bible with an old one I have at home. Oh, I'd appreciate that. Would you do that, Cal? Of course, Ben. Anything I can do to help. Thank you, Cal. I think I know of a grieving widow who may need some help. Hmm? <laughs> uh, Mrs. Smith? <laughs> Mr. Smith? Uh -huh. <laughs> <clears throat> Jake Smith was a very lucky man. Who? Uh, your husband. I haven't got a husband. Uh, when he was alive, I mean. Who? Uh, uh, your husband. I just told you. I never had a husband. Aren't you a widow? Certainly I'm a widow. But I'm afraid I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing complicated about it. Widowing's my business. Your business? Yes, you dear, sweet little man. Have another clove. You see, when I hear somebody's looking for an heir, I show up as the widow. Mm -hmm. You do? <clears throat> Why? Don't you see, if nobody else shows up, then I inherit the boodle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, isn't that wrong? Of course not, you dear, sweet little man. Look at the trouble I save everybody. They can all stop looking and have peace of mind. And of course, I always see that the money is put to good use. Why just oodles of people sleep better nights because of me? That is the most noble, humanitarian thing I ever heard in my whole life. You are absolutely <clears throat> the most thoughtful, wonderful person I've ever met in my whole life. Oh, you sweet, adorable little man. <laughs> I can't understand how no woman ever claimed you for her husband. May I have another clove? <laughs> Mr. Smith. <laughs> Miss Smith. <laughs> get you, get you, go. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Sit down right here, young man. Now, what is your name? Meredith. No, 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 no. What is your real name, your Chinese name? Ah, uh, Ah Chao. Ah, ch uh, what? Ah, Chao, like. Uh, no, never mind. Now, look. Ah, Chao, I had a friend of mine read this paper which you gave me. I don't think you should expect to inherit anything from the Jake Smith estate. Ah, uh, so. Aren't you disappointed? Is that all you have to say? Confucius say, win some, lose some. <laughs> you have wife honorable, sir. Oh, no, but <laughs> what has that got to do with what we're talking about? Ah Chow, number one houseboy. Oh, well, Ah Chow, I don't need a houseboy. Cook, clean, sew button. Like I said, I don't need one. How you know till you try. Have references. Well... <laughs> now, oh. Ah Chow, they're in Chinese. Why not? I Chinese. Number one, references. Oh, what? Good afternoon, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, Potts, I'd like you to do me a favor. Certainly. Is Miss Meredith Smith in? As far as I know, I didn't see her go out. Uh, would you uh, tell her to come down to the lobby? I'd like to talk to her. 
I don't have to tell her. Here she comes now. Uh, remember, all you have to do is just look at her and see if you recognize her. All right, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, Miss Smith. Oh, hello, Mr. Cartwright. Hi. How are you today? Oh, just fine. Uh, Miss Smith, I'd like you to meet Mr. Ozzie Flint from Abilene. Well, that's where you're from, isn't it? Oh, sure, I know her, Mr. Cartwright. That's Callie Martin. Used to sing at the Red Dog Saloon. Howdy, honey. <laughs> Callie, this was bound to happen. You let me go. Not yet. Are you sure you're not making any mistake? Oh, no, not in a million years, Mr. Cartwright. That's her, all right. Uh, and I, I know that fella she's with. A uh, gambler named Ace and the Whole Jones. You dirty skunk, will you let me go? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, if, if, if you don't need me no more, I, I, I'd just as leaf go while I'm still able. You go ahead. Thank you, Ozzy. Thank you for your help. Uh, from now on, I don't know nobody. Well, what are you going to do now? Try and swindle somebody else? Callie, I'm no swindler. You know better than that. Now, what do I have to do to convince you? Uh, child, what are you doing? I number one bellboy, too. Bellboy? Yes. Business has been so good lately, I had to put on help. I have job now. Make plenty money. I can now stay America. No need go back Hong Kong. Mr. Cartwright? Yes, Mrs. Smith? I'm leaving immediately. Does that mean that you're relinquishing your claim to the Jake Smith estate? It does. Mr. Smith here and I have just been united in the holy bonds of matrimony. And I have no intention of working on my honeymoon. Working on it? Well, congratulations to both of you. Uh, uh, Mr. Smith, are you leaving too? Uh, with my beautiful bride. Well, I, you know, this, this Bible, it's authentic. Of course. May I have my Bible, please? Well, yes, of course. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I knew all along I was not related to Jake Smith. <laughs> now I can retire and let you go on snatching the boodle. What? Let's get out of here while the getting's good. Yes, you marvelous, wonderful man. Well, I hope they'll be very happy with each other. Well, that leaves me with two discredited heirs. No, only one. You see, old Jake Smith really was my grandfather. Ah. Uh. You know that ranch he would never leave? Well, it was located on the south bank of Willow Creek. Yeah, well, anybody could have found that out. You're a hard man to convince, Mr. Cartwright. Well, let me see. Oh, I remember something about a copper mine that he owned in Idaho. Uh, no, Montana. And when I was a little guy, I took a ride from Oklahoma City to New Mexico on a freight line that he was part owner in. And the last time I saw him, he was just getting ready to buy some land to run cattle on down in Texas. Huh? Oh, one more thing. He could put away more steak than any man I ever met. That does it. By golly, you are the fella. Meredith Smith, I, I've been looking for you for six months. I'm going to turn that estate over to you right now. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Then you really are. Yes, I really am. Callie, you wouldn't want me to live on that big ranch all alone, would you? My name's Betsy. Betsy Hackenbush. <laughs> Mine's Jake, honey. Jake Smith, just like my grandfather's. My middle name was Meredith. I don't think I'll have any trouble remembering that name. One more thing. You know, I just can't see you moving off to Europe to study music. Well, then, I'll just have to settle for a piano in the parlor. Good. 
sure was. Well, I'm sure glad that you enjoyed it. Well, why don't we mix a little business with pleasure? I have the water agreement here all ready to sign. You'd like to read it? Oh, yes. Well, I'm sure that's in order, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, not so fast, dear. We did say I was going to handle the money. I meant the household money. I had all the money. Well, it's very obvious, Mr. Cartwright, that uh, my husband's grandfather was very lenient with you. What do you mean? Now, honey, please. Let's... Shh, darling. You know very well that you need that water desperately. Oh, is that... Uh, is that what you think, Mrs. Smith? Oh, no, it's not what I think. It's what I know. Now, I figure a 25% increase per month to be added to the total until the 12-month period is ended. Um, Mrs. Smith, uh, I think perhaps you ought to know that uh, <clears throat> Mr. Crawford was by here yesterday. Mr. Crawford's a neighbor of ours. He owns the ranch about 20 miles away from here. He has a big, gushing stream of water running along his land, and he offered to supply us with all the water we could possibly need here, so... Maybe we'd just better forget about this contract completely. Well, let's not be hasty now. A deal's a deal. Well, uh, uh... There are your water rights, Mr. Cartwright. I'll say goodbye to the Cartwrights, honey, and uh, thank Hi. Mr. Cartwright for his generous hospitality. Thank you, Mr. Well, Cartwright. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you for dropping by. Bye. Mr. Crawford offer you that water, sure enough. Well, it seems to me I went by Crawford's place uh, not too many days ago. I think it was last Wednesday, and that gushing, bubbling stream was dry as a bone. Oh. Well, I'll tell you, son. Uh, see, when you play poker with a gambler or with his wife, sometimes uh, a bluff comes in mighty handy. <laughs> How much this time, Bill? Just a half a dollar this time. Are you sure you don't want to go for a dollar? Oh, come on, Bill. Don't be a piker. It's for a good cause. Dollar, you stay out of this. All right, you're on. Here we go. You ready? Come on. Ready. Okay. What? Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Three beers, Cosmo. Two beers. You got him, Bill. So what's going on down there, Joe? Yeah, it's just a little fundraising campaign for the church. That preacher's the best there is. Come on, let him have it. Come on, come on. I think I will make myself a little drinking money. Now, come on, Cliff, it's your first payday. Why don't you save your money? Well, you never see me arm wrestle. Oh, you're good, huh? Well, the best. All right, I'd like to make a little bet on it. Well, make it easy on yourself. I'll take five. I'll take five of them. You're on. Looks like a hired man's gonna lose his money, Joe. Come on. Bend it over, a little harder. Come on. <laughs> well, thanks for the contribution, Bill. Well, I'll try you again later. Come on, Dolly, I'll buy you a beer. Who's next, man? Takes oh, a lot yeah. of money to build a church. There's ten dollars, preacher. Take any part of it you want. I never bet more than a dollar. All righty. Have a little... Hey, you've got a pretty strong grip there, Reverend. Look, since you fellas are already involved here in a wrestling match, you might as well get acquainted. Paul, this is Cliff Rexford. Cliff, this is Reverend Paul Watson. Paul Watson? There was a gunfighter by that man. I'm the same Paul Watson. Well, then you know who I am, don't you? Yes. I've waited a long while to find you, Watson. The next time you see me, you have that collar off and a gun on.
Joe and Haas find you? They came by the house. Is there something wrong, Paul? No, no, nothing. I assume. What's that all about, Annette? What? Oh, I just picked up $50 for the new church. You didn't tell him, did you, Joe? No, of course not. Tell me what? It's a surprise for our anniversary dinner. You know, we've been married one month today. Hey, uh, look, Paul, if Joe and I can be of any help, anything we can do. Well, as a matter of fact, there is, Hoss. You can have that lumber out at the church bright and early tomorrow morning. All right, listen, we better get on home. Pa's leaving for Sacramento tomorrow. Congratulations on your month of marriage. Thank you, Joe. We'll see you Congratulations. Soon. Bye. Bye. Come on. Now, what's the surprise you've got? You just wait. Good afternoon, ma'am. You mind moving your horse? Why don't you go around, Mr. Watson? <laughs> His name's Cliff Rexford. He uh, works for the Cartwrights. But somebody ought to teach him some manners. That Cliff show better watch your step. Everything's been going so good for Paul. I sure hate to see anything spoil it now. Yeah. Oh. Whether he knows it or not, he don't want no part of Paul Watson. If you had been late for dinner on our first month's wedding anniversary, You're I... You're a temptress, Sue. I should be out tending my flock. You should be right here with me. Hmm. Another one? You know, for an old married couple, when you do that, I, I can feel it tingle right down to my toes. I've noticed something the same feeling myself. Will it always be this way, Paul? I hope so. Now, what's for dinner? First course, chicken. Second course, chicken. Third course, chicken. Well, let me see now. Chicken. That would be Mrs. Spaulding. You're so right, Reverend. Oh, God's been good to us, Sue. Perhaps even better than you think. Look. Our wedding present from Adam Cartwright. The final plans for the church. Well, do you realize what this means? Our own church. And that's not all. Ben sent word that the organ arrived in Sacramento. He'll arrange to have it shipped to us. Well, I wish I could think of a way to repay them. Oh, Paul. The Cartwrights are our best friends. Why, Ben Cartwright practically raised me, and Adam and, and Hosser are like brothers. And little Joe? My very first beau, so watch your step, Reverend. Sue, being a preacher's wife isn't easy. There'll be times you won't understand the things I feel I must do. Anything you do, I'll understand. You're my husband, Paul. Any regrets? Mm. Not so far. Hey, that just about covers everything. Pass, you'll be in charge when I'm done. I hope the ranch is still here when you get back. <laughs> you just make sure that everything you have to do is done right. Oh, one more thing. Uh, those plans that Adam drew up for the church, I think you should take them up to the sawmill so they can see exactly what's called for. Yeah. Well, whatever's called for, it'll be heavy. I can promise you that. Little old church will be around after we've been long gone, I'll guarantee. Well, you know, not only building a church, you're helping a man realize a dream. Morning, Mr. Cartwright. Morning, Cliff. Uh, boys tell me you're doing a good job with those new horses. Well, I like working here, Mr. Carran. Oh, good. House will be in charge uh, when I'm away. Yes, sir. Well, boys, take care of things while I'm gone. Right, Paul. Joe? So, good luck on the trip. Bye. So long, boy. Well, 
Well, I guess I better get back to work. Hey, uh, you need that gun for breaking horses? As a matter of fact, yeah, I do. But you never can tell when you might run into a snake. Sure would like to know what's eating him. Yeah. Well, we gotta get those plans to sawmill. Yeah, Sue said she'd have Paul there by nine o'clock. I'm doing the Lord's work. You know, you almost got me converted. Well, it said pride goeth before the fall, but I guess I'll have to risk it, Hoss. I got an awful lot to be proud of. Hey, Hoss, give me a hand over here, will you? Yeah. Did you mention anything about Cliff? Not a doggone word. It was running like nothing ever happened. I never tell you two that idle hands are the devil's tools. Of worship. Amen. How about some fried chicken? Help yourself, Hoss. Chicken, my favorite meal. Hey, would you do me a favor and tell me what isn't your favorite meal? Yeah, raw fish and maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not ungrateful for the gifts from my parishioners, but there are times I wish Mrs. Spalling was switched to raising something other than chickens. Hey, we're going to butcher beef next week. I'll send you some. Uh, you Cartwrights have done more than your share already. Oh, I didn't tell you, I uh, raised another $50 at the Sazerac Saloon last night. Paul, you spend more time in that saloon than you do in church. Well, I hope the Lord will forgive me for being practical, but I learned a long time ago that men are a lot more liberal in a saloon than they are in a church. You know, Paul, you got a real persuasive way about you sometimes. Well, that's the one part about preaching I don't like, Hoss. I've never quite gotten used to holding my hand out. What would you rather do, knock them down and sit on them? I've considered it. <laughs> Now, this church means a lot to me, to both of us. It's our whole life. Yeah, I've heard you talk about your Paul. He used to be a circuit rider. How bad he won the church. Well, my father was a good man. Well, come on, let's eat. We've got work to do. Doggone it, Paul. That's downright sacrilege. Talking about food and work all in the same breath. <laughs> It's a private party, preacher. Stay out of it, Joe. You too, Hoss. So. You ain't got a gun on, preacher. I told you. I gave up the gun, Cliff. I prayed that you had. You prayed. You cheap, two-bit hypocrite. Shoot! Stay out of it! Are you just gonna stand there and take it? Are you gonna put on a gun? No, Cliff. It's not the Lord's way. Well, you can't hide behind the Lord forever. Sooner or later, I'm going to make you put on that gun. 
Cliff, pick up your pay at the house. That suits me fine. I want you to fire him, Hoss. He had a right to do what he did. I killed his twin brother. I'm not going to hang around. You can send my pay to the hotel in town. I'm not in the habit of nosing in other people's personal affairs. But Paul Watson is a particular friend of mine. You sure it ain't his wife who's a particular friend of yours? Sue and I grew up together. Her father was the foreman of this ranch before he died. Yeah, I guess you could say she is a particular friend. Or do you have something else in mind? Nothing. Just bunkhouse talk, I heard. Look, I just came to ask if you wanted your job back. I don't want it. That's fine, that's what I thought you'd say, but I did promise Paul I'd ask you to stay on. Well, he's a real Christian, ain't he? Well, sometime you ask him about the time he gunned my brother down in Coopersville. Ask your Christian friend about that. He told me about that. Did he? Did he tell you how he used a trick holster with a spring on it? Oh, it made him a real fast draw, a dirty little trick gadget. I've heard a lot of stories about Paul, but never anything like that. Well, I've talked to men who were there. They saw it happen. It's the only way he could have beaten my brother, the only way. Joe, I got no quarrel with you or with your brothers or anyone else. Just Paul Watson. Now, I've been waiting five years to find him. And I'm going to get him. If you spend all your time looking at it, we're never going to get it done. I can't keep my eyes off it. Uh, when I preach from here, it's going to be like preaching from a mountaintop. Uh, we're going to have the place in pretty good shape in another week. Won't be exactly a mountaintop, but it's going to be a darn good church. Well, it's not large, but to me, it's a cathedral. Well, you mean it isn't? What do you suppose he's up to? It doesn't matter, just keep working. What's that you're building over there? You know what it is. Who do you figure is going to preach in that church once you get it built? Reverend Paul Watson. 
That's too bad. You're going to a lot of work for nothing. You're pretty good with that gun, Joe. Yeah, I am. Don't make me find out how good. that prove? You gotta admit it's not as noisy around here. Well, let me handle them in my own way. Let's go back to work. Up so late. Well, that's sort of worried about you. Yeah. I was a little worried about myself for a while. I went in town looking for Cliff, but I couldn't find him. When I tell him if he wants a fight so bad, I'll be glad to give it to him. You do like Paul says and stay out of this. He's got to handle this his own way. Yeah, well, how much more is he going to take? Don't underestimate Paul. He could break Cliff in two, and with one hand, you know it. Yeah. Of course, I just hate to see him humiliated like that. Yeah. You know how much being a preacher means to Paul. If he puts a gun on his hip, the whole town will be against him. That'd be a fate worse than death to Paul Watson. Tell me about it. What? Cliff Rexford's brother. So, before I came here, and before I met you, I was nothing. I was less than nothing as a man. I guess I was about as lonely as a man can get in life. Well, now I have something. Something I love very dearly. So have I, Paul. I have to find a way to defend it. Do you understand? I want to. The trouble is there's still too much of the old Paul Watson left. When Cliff hit me, I... I still wanted to fight back. But why shouldn't you? Because that's the wrong way. It's my duty to lead him out of that dark valley of hatred and bitterness and into the light of life. But I don't know if I'm worthy or capable or man enough to do it.
really shouldn't take the day off. We have too much to do here in town. Now, that's the first chance we've had to see our church alone. Now, what's wrong with that? You're right. We should take the day off. God forgive him. God forgive him? Paul, he's destroyed our whole life, everything that we've worked and saved for. He didn't know what he was doing, Sue. He was trying to get at me, don't you see that? Yes, I see that clearly. Now you must find him, take him to Sheriff Coffee, and have him put in jail. I can't do that. Why? Sue, we both know what he did was wrong. It was terribly wrong. But we both have to understand why he did it. But why can't he understand that what happened to his brother was not your fault? Because he's filled with hate. Paul, nothing is ever going to change that. So if that's true, then everything I've worked for and lived for these past five years means nothing. Cliff Rexford, huh? Where's Paul? He went for a walk. Oh, Joe, I... I find it so hard to try to understand him. He just stood there and asked God to forgive Cliff. And then I got angry and... Oh, I don't know, Joe. I, I guess I just don't have the strength he has. I don't think any of us do. You love him very much, don't you? Very much. But I can't stand to see him hurt like this. 
Yeah, I know. Paul's a friend of mine. I'd do anything in the world for him. But he feels that this is his fight, and he wants to handle it in his own way. All we can do is stick by him. But I guess that's what a wife and a friend are for, isn't it? Thank you, Joe. I needed a friend to talk to. Now, why don't you go on home, and I'll wait here for Paul. Thank you. Don't worry. Giddy up. I'm going to rebuild it, Joe. How long have you been over there? I heard. She had a right to be angry. I've been out walking, trying to fight my own anger. Joe, our Lord suffered all the indignities on the earth, and he conquered them. If I'm to be his minister, I can't turn from the path he made for us. Those are pretty tough footsteps to follow. But it's our duty to try, isn't it? Let's not just stand here. If we're going to rebuild this place, let's get started. Dolly, what's yours? What? No reason. I was lonesome. You look lonely. I think being alone is the worst thing in the world, don't you? Nope. I like it. Do you? What do you drink? Cosmo, let us have whiskey, huh, please? And put it on my tab, Cosmo. Why should we put it on your tab? We both might make a new friend. <laughs> you look like you might need one. Do you dance? My brother and I learned together from a girl. Oh. We're just kids, but we can really dance up a storm. Does your brother look like you? We were twins. Like a, a right arm and a left arm. More than brothers, really. More like friends, you know? Where is he? He's dead. Paul Watson killed him five years ago. Oh, but he's a preacher. Not to me, he ain't. Putting a collar on a gunfighter doesn't make him a preacher. He's the same Paul Watson. And I'm going to make him put on a gun. And I'm going to kill him. Thanks for the dance. What'd you say your name was? Dolly. Mine's Cliff. Hello, Cliff. forward to the Reverend's first service in the new church, but it's been a slight delay. We should be ready to have services in about two weeks. Please stop by for tea when you're not busy. Thank you for everything you've done for us. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.
afternoon, Mrs. Watson. I haven't seen your husband around lately. I figured after the improvements I made on the church, she'd pay me a visit. Wait a minute, Miss Watson. Too bad your husband doesn't have that kind of gumption. Be right there. May I help you? Yeah. You sell dresses in here? Yes. I want a dress for my girl here, a real expensive one. It's all right if I buy a dress, isn't it? I got the money right here, see? Well, why don't you just look around and maybe you'll find something? All right. Here's a real pretty one. Let's try this on. Oh, it's not my size. No? That's too bad. Cliff, uh, why don't we forget it? I want to buy a dress. What's wrong with that? Here, this your size? I don't know. Come on, let's try it on. See how it looks on you. It's in there, isn't it? Come on. Cliff, please. That's quite a man you're married to. Yes, sirree, quite a man. What do you figure a fellow would have to do to provoke a man like Paul Watson, huh? Why won't you just go away and leave us alone? I will. Just as soon as that husband of yours puts on a gun. Cliff, look, I'm sorry about what happened to your brother, and I'm sure Paul's sorry, too. He, he's never really told me what happened, but, but ever since your brother died, Paul has been a different man. Different? How could a killer like that be different? Because he put down his gun and he turned to God. Well, he needed a place to hide, a wall to protect him. That's why he turned preacher. A collar turned backwards doesn't change a man inside. He could kill a man without batting an eye, with, without mercy, like that, quick. Just instincts and reflexes. He's still like that inside. He knows it, and I know it. All I got to do is strip away that wall, and he'll come out and fight. And he'd kill me just as quick as I'd kill him. All I got to do is strip away that wall. What are you doing? What are you thinking? Stop it! Stop it! Cliff, stop it! Hold on, let me see. No, I don't like that. I like that. Oh! I'll get you. Get into the mat. Oh! Oh! Stop it! Oh, I hope you feel like a big man. Tell your husband I'll be over at the slum. Find me there. Do you think this is going to bring your brother back to life? Hey, let me help you. Honey, All right. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was going to happen. It's not your fault. You, you can't fight hatred with words. 
Hey, come on, let me help you. So what happened? It was nothing. Why don't you ask Cliff Rexford? He's in the saloon. Joe, please. I just came from Sue. I want you to get out of town. I've got no quarrel with you, Joe. You're not going to provoke me, Joe. It's that preacher I want. Cosmo, give me a bottle. I told you I wanted you out of town. All right. Joe, this is my fight. I've waited a long time for you, preacher. Anytime you're ready. I'm ready. I'm going to tell you a little bit about your brother. Because you remind me of him standing there with that gun, afraid. My brother wasn't afraid of anything. Yes, he was, Cliff. He was afraid every waking moment of his life. He died in my arms, crying like a baby. Are you going to draw or are you going to preach me a sermon? Your brother had a moment just like this. He made the wrong decision. He died a frightened, lonely man. And you killed him. Yes. And I've paid for it every moment since. But not enough. You got one more payment. Why don't you finish it? Go ahead. Kill me! I guess no man's perfect, Joe. We all have our breaking point. But somewhere, somehow, man has to conquer himself. I guess I just did that. Might as well get him a doctor. Why didn't he kill me? Because he's too much of a man for that. Nails? I got plenty. I can use a few. Now, what are you doing, eating them things? I'm going to in a minute if I don't get some lunch. <laughs> it's all ready. I just have to get it out of the wagon. Well, you better not wait much longer. My brother's lab will wither up and blow away. 
Well, what do you think of it? It looks lovely, Paul. Thank you, Sue. Now, how about some lunch? services here tomorrow, is that right? That's right, I am. I, uh... I just came from the doctor. He said my ribs are in pretty good shape. He said I'd go back to work if I wanted to. Glad to hear it. What I'm trying to say is... I'm a pretty good carpenter if I put my mind to it. And I figure, since I did all this damage, it's only right if I help rebuild it. And I'd like to attend services if you'd let me. Of course. I'll put you in the front row if you want. Boss? Cliff? Hey, Cliff. You think you're pretty good with a hammer, huh? The best. I'd like to make a little bet on it, would you? Anything you say, up to one dollar. You're on. Say kill her and be done with it. No call for that, Wynn. She ain't likely to find a way back to wagon train from here. Supposing she does, I wouldn't put nothing past her. And how's she gonna get there? Don't ask me. Don't ask me how she does nothing. She ain't human. That's a fact. She's haunted. Just the same. All we agreed to was to carry her way up here in the hills and dump her. That's right. She could get far. No food, no water. All right, but I'm warning you, we're making a mistake. We're giving you your chance, but there ain't gonna be no second one. So stay away from our wagons if you know what's good for you. Jeremy! Wait! Your little girl, Delcy. What are you talking about, Marie? Tomorrow. Tomorrow her throat is going to hurt. It's going to be bad, Jeremy. There she goes again. What did I tell wait you? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to know what she's talking about. What about Delcy, Marie? She's shocking. She may die. And all the other children, they be sick. Are you satisfied? She's just trying to get even, trying to scare us. Ain't that what you're trying to do, Marie? Gwen, come on. Let's get out of here. She's giving me the creeps.
Please, bon Dieu. Rid me of this curse. Make me like the others, please. his tracks. Yep. He's a smart one, though, ain't he? Yeah, but I think we're gonna get him this time. Well, we better. The rate he's been getting our strays, we ain't gonna be able to run no beef down here at all if we don't. Come on. Yeah. he's been since he's born. Yeah, I could have sworn I saw something else up on that rock. No, nah, you just excited over seeing old big boy here, that's all. Uh, I saw something. Hey, Hoss, come here. Let's see how bad she's hurt. she come from in here? Where and how? There's nobody living within miles of here. I'll go get my canteen. Field. You got off lucky, young lady. Just a few bruises, a wrenched ankle. Nothing to worry about. Any pain? No. Well, let's try walking for a spell. There you are. Right, now take it easy. Don't put too much weight on right away. That's it. Yeah. And you better not walk on it any more than you have to. Oh, and uh, if you should notice any headaches, 
I want to know at once, understand? Thank you. You are kind. Not at all. I get some rain, don't you think, Ben? Well, I'll get you a use some. I think she'll be all right. Huh? All she needs is to stay off her feet for a few days and rest. Who is she, do you know? No. Boys found her up at uh, Red Bluff Peaks. Miles from anywhere, lying there unconscious. Just looked down the gully and there she was, all by herself. No horse, no buggy, no burro, no nothing. Looked kind of spooky to me. Oh, come on, Hoss. Well, I better be on my way. Say hello to Mrs. Martin. I surely will. Good night, Ben. Good night. Good night, Doc. What are you doing out of bed? Oh, it, it's all right. Well, you shouldn't have that weight on your foot. You better sit down now. Are you feeling all right? Oh, yes, I'm better. Oh, uh, my, my name is Cartwright, Ben Cartwright, and my son, Hoss. You are very kind. Oh, you, uh, you sure gave us a bit of a scare there. <laughs> For a little while, we'd... was very beautiful, your wife. What? So young when she died. That was very sad. Who told you that? It's the music box. Makes me see pictures. Oh, you think I ought to go get the doc back? Oh. What, what, what do you mean? Uh, it, it, it makes you see pictures. I don't understand, but I see her very clearly. She was your father's wife, but she was not your mother. Your mother died before her. Paul, I'm gonna go out and help Joe in the bar now. See you at 12. But how, how do you know all this? Oh, it's, a, it's just a game, I, I, I guess. I don't even know your name. Marie. Marie. That was her name. I know. What do you mean you know? I meant... Well, it, it is a name that suited her. The music box, it seemed to say. Marie. What's your last name? You don't want to tell me? Was well, some some reason for you not wanting to tell me? Are you are you in some kind of trouble? If 
if you are. I'd like to help you if, if I could. Why should you? Well, for one thing, because you come from the same part of the country that she came from. Louisiana, isn't that right? You know the Bayou people. Yes, I know them quite well. Very well. But she was not from the bayou, your Marie. Not from the swamps. She was from New Orleans, a Creole. I mean... Now, look, somebody had to tell you that. You couldn't have guessed that. No, I, I guess it. It's not so strange to guess. Many people guess many things. Oh, it's, it's strange that you should have guessed that. It, it's different. It's, uh, you, you're, you're different. It... No. No, I am not different. 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 What's the matter, Hoss? You want your feed? Yeah, I reckon I am a little bit Paul. Don't seem to have much appetite this morning. Well, I think we ought to mark that down on a calendar. Any day he's off his feet. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you feeling too well? I feel fine, boy. It's just... Well, it's that... It's that spooky gal we got in the house. We got to get rid of her somehow. Well, why is she upsetting you? Well, she... She don't exactly upset me. I, I just don't understand her. I, can't explain it. It's, what, well, it's like that music box. Now, how did she know that music box belonged to Little Joe's Ma? Explain that. No, I'm not. I don't know, Hoss. Well, somebody, somebody could have told her. Where? When? How? I don't know. I could. How'd she know Little Joe's Ma was dead, and that that my Ma had already died before her? How'd she know all that? Well, there must be some explanation. Another thing. You ever notice how she looks at you, them old big eyes of hers, and it's, it's like she sees you. And yet she don't really see you. Like she knows something that nobody else knows. Oh, come on. Will you hush? You're talking like she's some kind of a ghost or something. How do you know she ain't? Oh. Well, morning, Marie. Morning. Morning. Have a wonderful breakfast waiting for you. Come on, we got a wagon load of grain to pick up in town. How does your, uh... How does your ankle feel this morning? Oh, it's much better, thank you. Well, good. Yeah, uh, sit down. But what are you looking at me like that for? Oh, excuse me, I, I did... Little Joe, do you go fishing? Do I what? Do you go fishing? Well, yeah, sometimes I do. Why? Oh. Oh, nothing. I, I, I just wonder. Come on, little brother. We got work to do. Yeah. Now, hey, look, sometimes when I, uh, sometimes when I go up on a lake, you can come with me where we can hook into a big bass, okay? about, young lady. He is in danger, Mr. Cartwright. Well, uh, what kind of danger? Something bad is going to happen. Marie, let's have some breakfast, huh? No. No, there is something. A fish and arrow. And something black. He must be careful. It will harm him. What will harm him? A fish and an arrow. Now, Marie, that makes just no sense at all. I would bring harm to you. I must leave your house. Now, Marie. Come on, now, 
you're an intelligent young lady. No. No, it's true. They all told me. I'm voodoo. Oh, I'm voodoo. Dear, you're talking about superstitious nonsense now. It's on. not nonsense. Of course it is. No, they yes. all tell me. Since I was a child of ten, I bring the evil. I, I make my father to fall from the boat in the swamp. He lose his arm yeah, Marie, on didn't... the wagon train. I make the horse to fall and break his leg. I, oh, I make the wagon to catch fire. And I, I make a child to choke to death. Stop no! It's happening. It's happening again. I make it happen to your son. It's happening. The blackness, he lies on the ground. His eyes. Oh! Oh, mon Dieu! His eyes. I... Now there... There is... Nothing. I... See nothing. Joe? Yeah, looks like we got a pretty good rain coming. Boys, tell me the name of a doctor in Virginia City. Yeah, Dr. Martin. His office right across the street from the Palace Hotel. Thank you. Sure looks like a storm blowing right into West Valley. Hey, is that where you're coming from? The wagon train to California from Louisiana. We're better down there for wagon repairs. You boys will excuse us. We've got to get our daughter to a doctor. Louisiana. Is that where that spooky gal came from? That's right. West Valley. That's close to over there where we found her. Looks like she might have run away from that wagon train, reckon? I don't know. If so, I wonder why. All right, Dale said it's just a sore throat. The doctor will fix you up in no time. Mama? Yes? Mama, am I going to die? Yeah, I guess you must be right, Hoss. She must have been with that wagon train. Why don't you just ask her? No, I asked her, but she wouldn't tell me where she was from. She's a frightened girl. Well, what are we going to do with her? Well, first off, I guess we'd better find out whether she came with that train. How long do you figure it would take to ride out to the West Valley? About an hour? Yeah, I'll go, Pa. Oh, no. Not you, Joe. Uh, I have something else for you to do. Boss, why don't you ride out there, see if her folks are with that wagon train. And if they are, tell them Marie's here and she's well, and they can come and get her at any time. Yes, sir. Well, what's that job you got for me, Pa? Oh, yes. Uh, take this into Dr. Martin in town. There's a note inside which will explain everything. And uh, he'll give you something to bring back to me. Yes, sir. Who is it? Oh, it's uh, it's me, Marie. Uh, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, come in. 
It's not locked. Oh, I, I didn't waken you, did I? No, it's all right. Are you uh, feeling better? Oh, yes. <laughs> I've not slept like that for weeks. Oh, good. Well, you'd better take the weight off your foot. It's so, it's so peaceful here. One feels happiness, contentment. Well, I'm glad it's agreeing with you. <clears throat> Maria, there's something that I, uh, I'd like to tell you. You did what you had to do. What? My mama and papa, you have sent word to them that I am here. Now, who told you that? I know. You, you, you couldn't. I try to tell you, but you do not believe me. I am voodoo. I see things happen before they happen. Now, Marie, nobody can do that. Oh, I know you are trying to help me. But me? Nobody can help me. I make the terrible things to happen. Now, Marie, nobody can make things happen. What have you got there? Where'd you get that? In the bayou. When I was ten, my nurse gave it to me. I must wear it always. If I don't, I will die. Oh, look, Marie. Marie. Marie, look at me. You've got to stop believing these things. Much rain? Yeah, over there in the West Valley mostly. Well, what would you find out at the uh, wagon camp? Well, I found out that her ma and pa are there. Oh, did you tell Marie was with us? I sent word to him through a fellow by the name of Wynn Grady that I met on the outside of the camp. That's as close as they let me get. How come? Well, they, they got sickness in that camp, Paul. Bad sickness. And a bunch of the youngins have got what looks like diphtheria. And that ain't all. This, this fellow Grady tells me that this girl up here brought it to him. Fish. Arrow. Fish. Fish and arrow. I'll catch him. Let up for a spell. We promised Jeremy we wouldn't move till he got here. Wonder what's keeping him. Maybe Delcy took a turn for the worse. It ain't no sicker than my youngin'. Or mine. Please, I find out what you're going to do. Please, she is my daughter. Well, what about our kids? All of them sick. Some of them dying, all on account of her. <laughs> Leave them alone, Francois. Leave them alone. We must do what must be done. Your own daughter, Renée. You can do this to your own. She's voodoo. Madame Tobe told us. 
And always I've told you this. Madame Dove was a superstitious old woman out of her mind. That you hired to nurse Mary when she was sick. And now our own daughter. She has become one of them. She's voodoo. That's right, ma'am. We don't like this no more than you do. But we gotta get rid of her once and for all. Oh, no, please. What kept you, Jeremy? She's dead. My little Del Susie. Died about a half hour ago. Choking. Like she was being hung. Let's get. Oh, please. Oh, no, please. That burning, I got right up to him, and something spooked him. He took off like grease lighter. I don't know who that horse belonged to. Well, I, I saw his brand. He's one of the Jameson Brothers' studs. Jameson Brothers? Yeah, that Fish and Arrow brand. That's right. Well, Doc Martin said the stuff in here ought to answer your questions, Bob. Joseph, there's a black stallion loose around here somewhere. Stay away from him. Uh, why? Just do as I tell you. Don't ask any questions. What you getting mad at me for, Bob? I didn't do anything. There seems to be a storm coming up. Why don't you... Check the stock in the north pasture. Yes, sir. Guess we better check the west pasture. Yes, sir. I'll get your horse full. Devil, you know any prayers, which ain't very likely. You better start saying them. Look at her, standing there just as calm as a statue. What's the matter, little she-devil? Ain't you scared? Don't you feel no human feelings at all? Careful, Wynn. She may be working one of her spells. Not anymore, she won't. All right, let's get on with it. Why'd you do it, Marie? Why'd you take my Dulcie away? She never done you no harm. Can you bring her back to me? Can you bring her back to me and to her ma? Marie, can you please? Jeremy, talk sense. She ain't about to do nothing like that, even if she could. 
Maybe she can. Maybe she can take away all the sickness since she brought it on. Can you take the sickness away? Can you do that, Marie, before you die? Our children are sore sick with the diphtheria. <laughs> Delcy's up and died. Heisters. Take the diphtheria away, will you? Please. down now. You're making a mistake, Mr. Cartwright. It's far enough. She's a she-devil. Now you let us have her. So you could put her at the end of a rope? You let her down. Where are you from? We come from the wagon train. And her ma and pa knowed what we was coming over here to do, and they didn't try to stop us. So why did you? Why are you taking her side, Mr. Cartwright? Jeremy here lost his young'un. That's right. She told me my little girl was going to be sick, and that's what happened, just like she said. Now my little girl is dead. Well, do you think that she made her die? All she did was warn you about it. You're grown men. You talk as if you're from the Dark Ages. I tell you, my little daughter's dead. Look, I'm sorry about that. But if Marie wanted her dead, why would she warn you? Because she's a devil woman, and she ain't fit to live. Marie did tell us about those bad things before they happened. The rain. The rain is coming back. It's worse than before. The wagons. Oh, mon dieu, the wagons. Move them. Or they will drown beneath the great wall of water from the mountains. The women. The women are screaming. The children. The children. Flash flood, it's possible. The children. The rest of you stay here if you want. I'm getting back to my family. The children. The children. The children. I still think you're making a mistake, mister. You're gonna be sorry. It's all right. It's all right, buddy. It's all right. All right. Hey, Paul. What's going on, anyhow? Did you find little Joe the way I asked you to? Oh. Yeah, I found him, but he, he didn't want to come down. He wanted to stay after that black stallion. To stay away from that animal. It's all right, Marie. Right. Little Joe, the fish, the arrow. You see that? He settled down the minute he seen her. Oh, 
boss. Go tell little Joe to come back here. Yes, sir. Why, bon Dieu? What do you want from me? Bon Dieu? Bon Dieu, answer me. Why must I be different? I wait for your answer. Dove, I am coming to you, just as you said, down into the darkness. Madame Dove, do you hear me? You are right. Everything you taught me, I am yours forever and ever. From the darkness I come, to the darkness. I return. Hurry! Hurry! Hurry, stop it! I kill your son. I killed your son. I made that horse come here. I killed your son. Marie's warning that saved his life. Now, I was wondering why I bit my head off about that black horse. Well, if you'd listened to me, you wouldn't have been hurt at all. Then she didn't make it happen. Oh, of course not. <laughs> you see, so many people have been telling Marie that she's bad and evil that well, she's come to believe it herself. My poor Marie. Even I did not understand her. When the men came back to save the wagon from the flash flood, it was because she warned them. Oh, yes. Of course. You see, your daughter has a rare gift, ability to, to be able to foretell things. Foretell? Yes. A doctor in Europe has been making, uh, making studies of exactly this very thing. He's been doing some research with a number of people, and well, he's found even a, a peasant girl who, without education, can, can see things happen before they've happened. Did you show Maggie these? Yes, I showed Marie these, but she's so mixed up, she doesn't know what to believe or who to believe. That's why I had my son, Hoss, bring you out here, Mrs. Dumas. You must make Marie believe that this ability of hers is not harmful. Hoss, will you ask Marie to come down, please? Yes, sir. But how can I face her? What can I say? Well, you're her mother. I'm sure you'll find the right words. Oh, but it was I who exposed her to all these terrible things. I sent for a remedy woman to treat her with herbs when she was sick, instead of getting a real doctor. I did not know that Madame Dove was Mama Loy. Mama Loy? Voodoo Queen. Voodoo Queen? Well, no wonder Marie... Oh, baby. 
my poor baby. Please, can you forgive me? I didn't know. I didn't understand. Did you know those men were coming to kill me? I could not stop them. What can I say? No. I should have thrown myself in front of their horses. And Papa? You see, my mother and father, they know I am voodoo. No, Marie. You have been sick for such a long time. Now it is time to put an end to it. Please, Marie, come with me. I will help you. And Papa? I will make him understand. And if he does not, we will go together without him. But he will not stay away from us long. In time, he will come to us. Trust your mama, Mary. I know I do not deserve this, but please, I beg you. Oh, Mama. Mama. Now we go. Buggy's ready. Well, um, goodbye. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you too, Mr. Cartwright, for bringing me out of the darkness. Whatever this gift of yours is, use it well. And with your mother's help, I, I know you will. Well, goodbye again. Have a good trip. Thank you. Boss. I see something. The Virginia City race tomorrow. Yeah? And Abba Lucy's gonna win. Bet everything you've got. Thanks, Joe. What are brothers for? Get up! Get up! Oh. You know, I think she's gonna be all right, Pop. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody made a real effort to understand whatever is strange and unfamiliar, rather than fear it and try to destroy it?
tô đi bây giờ ô tô gì đi xa tô đi xa ra nắng ngồi ghế đi con à anh em anh em ờ, xong rồi tí về ngoại bảo ông lấy cho cái xe sầu tơ mà đi nữa nhá xe sầu cô tơ vẫn ở đấy mà mẹ ơi Đó. mẹ con đi lên cho ba một tí rồi mới đi ra nào bà ngoại đó bây giờ anh với ai mẹ, mẹ bố rồi Chá. có đi đâu mà lên các con ở nhà chơi thích hơn là đi đâu anh nhưng mà không ai lên đấy Nhưng mà tao đi đi Nhưng mà ai đi lên đấy Cô đi Nhưng mà con đi lên đấy kiểu gì Ai đèo không? không, mày không đèo Rồi ạ à? đấy là xịt phòng đấy nhá, xịt người là teo luôn này. không thấy cái mùi đấy nó hôi hắc à, em cái mùi cái bình xịt ở dưới nhà này. thơm mà. thơm mà là thơm nhưng mà chỉ xịt phòng thôi, không phải xịt vào người chết luôn. Ừ, thích cái mùi đấy hả? Ừ. chị lại thích cái mùi xả thì. ừ, cái mùi kia. Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn.